The United Nations Pavilion has dedicated its presence at Expo 2020 Dubai to promoting sustainable development goals. This interactive exhibition highlights subjects of water, food and energy, which addresses the most fundamental global challenges of our time. Newsroom Africa's Ayanda Nyati is live for us there uh, at Expo 2020 Dubai, and it is so great to see you. I feel like I haven't seen you in a really, really long time since we last spoke here on the show, Ayanda. Before we get to the issues discussed at the UN Pavilion, perhaps just give us a sense of what you've been up to over the past couple of days. Look, 24 hours between you and me, Michelle, feels like a lifetime, but perhaps that's just the problem that you and I have together. You're absolutely right. Such a busy moment here in Expo 2020 Dubai. We've had an opportunity to continue exploring the different pavilions that are on offer here. A quick reminder, of course, that this expo is divided into three main districts. The sustainability district, the uh, mobility district, as well as the um, opportunity district. And that's where we're actually standing now, at the opportunity district. And I'm sure already a lot of attention is around this circular figure that is, uh, I guess, framing my uh, position to you. This is uh, just a stone throw away from the UN pavilion. And this monument here actually represents the 17 sustainability goals, which is really the thrust of the UN's mission whilst they're here at Expo 2020 Dubai. They're hoping that whilst they are here, they're able to drive home what these goals are and ways through which countries, including South Africa, can contribute to the global mission of being able to achieve these goals. It's an issue that's been ongoing for years now. And in some ways, they're hoping that this kind of global event, the first of its kind since COVID-19 hit, will give them the platform, the spotlight, and the reach to be able to drive home the message around why these goals are important and why countries like South Africa need to care. Issues that we've outlined in terms of addressing some of the most fundamental global challenges of our time. Let's not forget Expo 2020 Dubai takes place in the midst of a global health crisis. COVID-19, particularly issues of vaccine equality, surely must be on the agenda there as well. Without a doubt. In fact, I took a moment, Michelle, as I come over uh, to see you clearly, to actually uh, put those questions to the commissioner of the uh, UN pavilion. His name is Mahir Nassan, and he essentially has taken time to also echo the sentiments of UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to mention just how unthinkable it is that something like vaccine inequity has become a problem so deeply entrenched in the global landscape, for lack of a better term. He even emphasized what you and I have discussed many times on the AM report, how there are still countries who are advocating for a third shot of a COVID-19 vaccine in a context where about 10% or less of the African population is yet to receive even their first shot. That's just one of the many issues that we're able to ventilate. Multilateralism too, also a question I was able to pose to him. And this is important because we live in a context where so many people have lost hope in the ability of world leaders to be able to drive the mission of collaboration in the world. I mean, we've lived through the Donald Trump era. The Philippines has had a president who in many ways has seen to be dividing uh, not only their population, but communities around the globe. And it is within that context that many people started posing questions around whether or not there's even space for the UN, given the challenges that they face and given the many hurdles that still lie ahead. Well, the thrust of what Nahir had to say is that the UN has always worked on the basis of hope and it is hope that they're holding on to even as we look to the future. So let me get you a sense of what else he had to say. Take a look. So a big theme that runs through Expo 2020 Dubai is about connecting people as we connect minds. So it should come as no surprise that there'll be a great interest in trying to figure out where the United Nations fits in that picture. Well, today we're at the UN Pavilion. It's also located at the Opportunity District. And we're here to explore not only those themes, but certainly the issues that surround it. And to have that discussion, let's bring in our guest, Meher Ness, and he's the uh, General Commissioner of this particular pavilion, joining us now on uh, Newsroom Africa. And it's great to see you, sir. Thanks so much for making time for us. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Expo 2020 comes at such an interesting time. When you just look at the global political landscape at the moment, many critics looking downwards on multilateralism, saying there's no space for collaboration on a global stage because of the type of leaders that have come through in countries like the U.S., I'm thinking the Philippines, etc., etc. 
I mean, how are you working to change that mindset at the very least through your presence at an expo like this? I think the Secretary General uh, Antonio Guterres in his speech and, and his advocacy throughout the last uh, year since he has been chosen as Secretary General outline and underline the importance of multilateralism. And I think what we see at headquarters in September, the UN uh, General Assembly, we had more than 100 leaders show up in spite of the pandemic, even though the option was you can send your video or you can be present, a majority of them showed up. Uh, the, there is still a place for multilateralism. Global problems require global solutions, and global solutions can only come through dialogue and through engagement. Expo represents another opportunity, and we see it. This is the largest expo in terms of participation from governments, from countries around the world, more than 192, and that is phenomenal. I mean, to see however small, very tiny countries have a pavilion, uh, their own independent pavilion, as, as on equal basis, to the largest of the public. And that credit to that goes to the UAE government, who has really worked hard to support countries that never had a full presence uh, at Expo to be here. Yeah. You speak about the UN General Assembly. I remember a big thrust of the messaging there was around the inequality that still exists, even during a global health crisis. Uh, I'm thinking, for instance, even just the inequality in the distribution of vaccines. Antonio Guterres is speaking greatly against that. Mm -hmm. uh, how uh, do you think there's space for that kind of conversation at an expo like this? I mean, a, a big part of what the messaging has been from a lot of countries is around technological development, uh, investment drives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Are you able to slip in some of these more sobering conversations, do you feel, whilst we're here? I think the issue of inequality is present uh, in every conversation that we hear today. I mean, the vaccine is, is a, the starkest of the examples that we have. I mean, when you talk about in some countries, we are talking about a third dose to people who already are protected. Right. Uh, and in, in other countries, and in, in Africa, for example, the number of people who have received a vaccine or had access to the vaccine is less than 10 percent. I mean, the, the, the percentages are really stark. The same, income inequalities have widened. We have seen during the pandemic uh, more than 100 million people driven into poverty. We have seen for the first time since 1990 the number of people living in extreme poverty increase rather than decrease, and that's due to COVID. So we see places like Expo it's a convening, as, as you started out, connecting minds, creating the future, is very much pursuing the theme of the UN 75. When we observed UN 75th anniversary last year, right. it was shaping, uh, shaping our future together. And I think this together is key to reducing inequalities, is key to working together to dealing with climate crisis, is key to dealing with the uh, COVID vac uh, vaccine inequity, but also measures to stop the uh, pandemic from uh, keeping hold. Right, right. Let's speak about that future if, if we can. I mean, how optimistic are you that that is a future that involves a whole lot more collaboration then than there is now? And I, I'm speaking about this in a context where, for instance, there are still really entrenched challenges in some nations. The situation as it unfolds in Afghanistan, political turmoil in many countries in Africa, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. With that context in mind, how optimistic are you feeling about the future, at least as far as collaboration is concerned? I think the UN's message has always been about hope. When you talk about the Charter of the United Nations, the principles in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the SDGs, Sustainable Development, building a world in which everyone thrives in dignity, peace, uh, equity on a healthy planet, that vision is what gives me hope because I see whenever I travel and people coming here, young people, when I engage with them, they get fascinated. The more they learn about the SDGs, the more they learn about what they themselves can do and how they can hold their leadership accountable. What, when you see different pavilions, I have been to 60 pavilions so far in the last 10 days, and I see the focus on sustainability. I think it, it is rising awareness that whether it's the National Pavilion of Country X or National Pavilion of Country Y or a multilateral organization or a regional organization, the theme of sustainability persists. In many of them, they also talk about the SDGs. And I think that gives me hope because without hope, we don't move and we don't take action. In the 1980s, we had the ozone layer 
governments and industry and private sector came together and then we had the Montreal protocols and now the issue has been dealt with and resolved. We still have to be vigilant and I think vigilance is very important. Now we are dealing with double-edged crisis. We have the climate crisis on one hand and then we have the pandemic crisis on the other. And I think leaders, no matter what their persuasion is, they recognize that they cannot solve either of these two problems within their own borders without collaborating and working with others. No matter how powerful they are, engagement, multilateralism is key to dealing with our global problems. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us. Hopefully that message is sustained not only for the weeks ahead, but until the expo itself uh, comes to a close in March next year. For now, thank you so much for speaking to us. You're thank welcome, you. and, and, and thank you, and thank your viewers for watching this. Fantastic. So, Naha Mason, once again, is the uh, Commission General of the UN Pavilion here at Expo 2020 in Dubai. And no matter how you see some of the global challenges that still plague the entire world, one thing is for sure, the idea that any one country will be able to pull us out of those difficulties is a far gone lost uh, prospect. There is still a lot of space for a kind of collaboration that looks past what divides us in some respects and looks towards perhaps where our common interests lie. For News from Africa on Channel 405, I'm Ayanda Nyati at Expo 2020 Dubai. And uh, Ayanda Nyati, live to us there uh, from Expo 2020, perhaps one of the standout points from that interview is no doubt how uh, people can use, you know, the young people who have been visiting, for example, the UN's pavilion. We often talk about whether events like this, Ayanda, happen in a silo. You know, how much good can come from uh, these various organizations, various countries speaking to themselves at something like Expo 2020 Dubai. But what your guest had to say about how young people have come to the UN Pavilion and how they can use the information that they've garnered there to hold their own governments accountable. That's one positive from Expo 2020. Without a doubt, and one can only hope, Michelle, that whatever is on display here is able to attract those young people that you allude to, because as the cliché goes, the future is in the hands of young people. But a lot of clichés are only clichés because they ring true, right? And I must say, with the time that we've been able to spend here, there is a large, uh, call it, <laughs> population of young people who flock to these expos. What might help, dare I add, is the fact that there are also schools that are based here in the UAE taking it upon themselves to use the expo as a moment of an excursion. In fact, we're told that in a week, there are two days that are put aside specifically just for pupils to be able to visit here. And I had an opportunity to actually speak to one of the teachers leading a cohort of teenagers. Among the questions I asked is, how on earth are you controlling teenagers in this heat? She laughed and didn't say much, but you can read into that what you will. Importantly, um, for her, it's about A, allowing the pupils to be back again together, especially in a context where they've been apart because of COVID-19. I know in South Africa today is also the first day back in school, so I'm sure a lot of parents like you, Michelle, can relate to that. But uh, secondly, uh, she also spoke about the need for pupils to be able to get this global view of what's taking place through the lens of what the Expo has to offer. Interestingly, though, the Expo won't necessarily touch as much as I would have hoped on the challenges that many countries are still facing. It's about putting your best foot forward and putting a great show on. But I really appreciated how the guest I was able to speak to at the UN was kind of willing to go there with us to say, yes, a lot of what is taking place here is about uh, presenting what countries are doing well, but hopefully there's room to also speak about places where people can still improve. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ayanda Nyati, it's always great to see you. Thank you so much for talking to us uh, on the AM Report. Can't wait to have you back in studio. He's live to us there from Expo 2020 Dubai.